All right. It's nine o'clock. It's time for roll call. Is the defense just not here? Ah, oh, such unprofessionalism. If there's no defense, this trial can't proceed. Gotta make a ruling based on the evidence that's already been presented. I'll now converse with the jury. We decide whether Prince Juan is guilty of murdering Major Howell and of conspiring to murder the king. Your Honor, may I have a word? Fine, make it quick. I'm a firm believer that trial must be orderly and punctual. There's no room for wishy-washy dilly-dallying. But it seems somewhat rash to end a trial session the moment it is due to start. Perhaps it would be prudent to wait five, ten minutes, in case the defense is just a little tardy. Then the trial still has a chance to proceed, and justice will be served. You're the prosecution. You have nothing to worry about. A guilty verdict is pretty much guaranteed. Your Honor, you appear confused. I am not here to secure a guilty verdict. Of course you are. You're a prosecutor. By definition, you're here to prosecute. No. My job description is to prosecute, but I am here in this courtroom to ensure that justice is served. Ah, Kokoriko. He wants to make sure that the person who goes to jail deserves to go to jail. An unfair, unbalanced trial is not of the spirit of justice. Well, that's very noble of you, but if the defense is absent, there's not very much that can be done. I'll hear no more about it. Now I'm going to talk to the jury. Oh! <gasps> Uh, the, uh, the, de the defense is <clears throat> present, <coughs> your honor. You're too late, Falcon. Oh, my dear JJ, you look a total mess. Did he take a morning swim in the sun or something? S something like that. Your honor, we are all present. We are only three minutes over schedule. Let's not needlessly dirty the pure name of justice. Rules of rules, Prosecutor. Falcon clearly has no respect for legal procedure. Frankly, for turning up while looking like a drowned rat, I ought to hold him in contempt of court. Your Honor... But Your Honor... Rules is rules! One more word out of either of you and I'll have you both disbarred. It's a pity. The King of France was most looking forward to standing behind the witness podium. They... <sighs> The King of France? He's here? Oh, are we not doing a trial after all? Oh, what a pity! Uh, Your Majesty, what a, uh, what a surprise. We are, well, you see, uh, <laughs> I guess he's the King of France. He just looks so much like that character from Hot to Full Boyfriend <laughs> that I'm like, I know this guy. You know it is my seventh time testifying against a would-be assassin, but it is the first time seeing a trial where the case has ended before it even began. Well, the defense, uh, he was late, and, uh... Pish posh, France did not become a great, dignified kingdom through rigorous punctuality. Let us go ahead with this trial. It will be fun! Look, I say the oath, I get us started! I swear to speak without hatred, without fear, to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Did I get it right? That was perfect, your majesty. JJ, I trust you have no objections with the king testifying. No, no objections here. Go ahead with the trial. It is fine by me. And surely you wouldn't stand in the way of the king, would you, your honor? Ugh. Ah, oh, fine. Proceed with this cursed trial. Excellent. Now, your majesty, could you tell us your activities on the day of the murder? My activities? Well, I started my day with tea and toast, as I normally do. I was dressed in my PJs at the time. I think you can skip ahead just a little bit. Perhaps your arrival at the Louvre. All right. Well, of course. My entourage and I entered through the Louvre South entrance around 9 o'clock. We passed through the Salle du Tivre with little fanfare. At the Grand Gallery, I unveiled the new painting. I gave a short speech to inspire the citizens who attended. That is when I was approached by a man claiming to be the Prince of Spain. He presented a rose, which was taken by Major Howell, and, well, I think you know the rest. Indeed we do, Your Majesty. Madames and Messieurs of the Court, what we have here is another testimony that establishes Prince Juan's guilt. This is no ordinary testimony. It is the testimony of perhaps the most trustworthy man in all of France. Oh, you flatter me, prosecutor. But I am the trustworthiest in all the kingdom, no? 
I have no doubts, your majesty. Nonetheless, I would like to perform a cross-examination. <sighs> How dare you doubt the king, the other nerve! Oh, calm yourself, judge. I have no qualms with standard legal procedure. Defense, please proceed. I want to see your best courtroom drama material. Alright, select a statement. We entered through the south entrance around 9 o'clock. We passed through the Sade du Tibre. In the Grand Gallery, I unveiled the new painting and gave a short speech. That's when I was approached by a man claiming to be the Prince of Spain. Can I spin it like, but there is no Prince of Spain? <laughs> uh, let's see. Contains green ink. <coughs> <coughs> oh my god. I feel like I'm missing stuff. <coughs> <coughs> I've used all of this already. Um, we enter through the Louvre South Entrance, right, which is where the bridge is, so that is where the birds saw them walk in, around 9 o'clock, passed through the Salle de Tibre, in the Grand Galerie, and unveiled the new painting, and gave a short speech, that's when I was approached by a man claiming to be the Prince of Spain. I wonder if that pen is poisoned. Because it's got green ink in it. Like, green in every game in the world is poison color. Um. I think I'm gonna go with Prince of Spain. Because I can spin it like, the guy that you have isn't the Prince of Spain. There is no Prince of Spain. I think that's what I'm gonna do. Oh, God. Your Majesty, you say you were presented with a rose by the Prince of Spain. Indeed, he formally introduced himself. I knew he was telling the truth because he called me Senor. That man was not the Prince of Spain. Your Majesty, prosecutor, and members of the court, brace yourselves because I have a revelation that will turn this trial on its head. Juan Querido is not the Prince of Spain. That is not a revelation, Falcon. It, it isn't. Of course not. We all knew that the current ruler is Queen Regnant. Isabella II, and that she has no children. The Corridos are obviously pretenders to the throne. Prince Juan's title is probably self-appointed. But his name isn't even Juan Corrido. I don't even think the fox is Spanish. So what? S so what? It's important. JJ, what's important is that this man is accused of committing murder and of conspiring to kill the king. That is what is in dispute here. The man's name is irrelevant. He could be named Juan Corrido or Bob Struni, for all I care. Doesn't change the events that transpired on the morning of January 6th. I suppose that's true. Do you have another question about Prince Juan? Uh <clears throat> I mean the other question uh, the other question option about Prince Juan was that was why did the dog take the rose? But that's obvious. It's just like... Just in case it's poisoned, right? <laughs> like, obviously? Uh... Man. I 
I guess no. Never mind. I have no more questions about Prince Juan. Uh. All the other ones are places, though. But I don't know. I don't. I don't have anything that points to any other place. So maybe I should just. I mean. Why did Major Howell take the rose? I'll just ask. Why not? I find it curious Major Howe snatched the rose before you could take it. Why did he do that? I see Major Howe has always been a protective fellow. I think he was just doing his diligence as a royal guard. Given how he took the figurative bullet for me, I would say he did his job well. Well, I can't argue with that. Do you, uh, nope. Okay. <clears throat> Um. Guess I'll just try something. Your Majesty, you say you entered the Louvre from the south entrance. Oh, yes, indeed. We approached from the Hotel de Ville, so it was an easy riverside stroll. Did you see anyone suspicious? Did you see anyone or anything suspicious around the Louvre's entrance? Suspicious? I'm afraid not, monsieur. Just a regular riverside type, bourgeoisie, vendors, people who fish, and the like. I see. Are you sure? Your Majesty, you say you pass through the south of Hebra, and eventually. Yes, indeed, we stopped briefly to look at the paintings, and then moved on to the Grand Gallery. <clears throat> Could you elaborate? What did you see in the south of Hebra? What did I see? Well, Roman stuff, mostly. I meant aside from the Roman artifacts. For example, did you talk to someone in the room who wasn't a member of your entourage? You're reaching, JJ. The king already testified he passed through without encountering anything of interest. I have reason to believe this was a key moment on the day of the murder. I want the king to elaborate on exactly what and who he saw. Then I suppose you'll have to proceed, your majesty. All right, let me think. So there was that giant door stop, and there was that copper urn thing. Oh, there was something else, now that you ask. I was offered a box of chocolates by some peasant mademoiselle. I don't have much of a sweet tooth, but Ma Major Howe was keen to accept a chocolate or two on my behalf. What? Yes. Mm, did I say something startling, prosecutor? N no. Mm, please continue, your majesty. I think the prosecution is startled because he came to the realization I was not spouting drivel in the previous trial session. Well, that's debatable. To cut a long story short, your majesty, this mademoiselle may hold some relevance to the case at hand. Could you describe her? Really? She's relevant? Well, mm, let me think. I didn't get a good look at her face, but she was a sorry-looking swan, probably in her late teens or early twenties. A sorry, sorry looking swan, you say? I don't suppose her name was. Mademoiselle Signy. Signy? That sounds familiar. Yes, I think that was it. She was called Mademoiselle Signy. I see. Undoubtedly significant. Mademoiselle Signy gave chocolates to Major Howe minutes before he died. Now, just a minute. I see what you're alluding to, JJ. <coughs> you're suggesting that the gifted chocolates killed the Major. But that line of reasoning holds no weight because the evidence is circumstantial. Circumstantial, my tail figure. This is the king just testified. Major Howell ate chocolate. Yes, that much is no longer in dispute. But you still have not proved that the chocolates were poisoned. Without that, we must assume that the swan was merely offering a gift. Rather than speculating, she was a murderer. <laughs> yes. Yes. Shame on you, defense implicating a poor, innocent girl like that. Disgusting. Why I ought to end this trial. Hold on. 
I do have evidence that the chocolate was, in fact, poisoned. I don't believe you, JJ. If you had a piece of evidence that significant, you would have slammed it down already. Present it. Well, I can't. It's not really the evidence folder type of evidence. Why am I not surprised? The drama was just getting good. Why are you all suddenly so silent? Well, your majesty, it appears the defense just had a realization of his own. That he lacks the evidence to support this theory. <laughs> Since he cannot continue with his argument, I believe the cross-examination has come to an end. Oh. Let me present my evidence. I don't have any, though. I'm not done yet. Let me present my evidence. I had the chocolate wrapper back in my office, and Sparrowson ate it. Stop, JJ. Just stop while you have a little dignity. The result of whatever crackpot pseudoscientific experiment you performed did not constitute valid evidence. This trial is over, Your Honor. About bloody time. Take your leave, Your Majesty. Very well. I am pleased that justice has been thoroughly served. Until the next assassination attempt, adieu, monsieur. All right, now I'm going to deliberate with the jury. <sighs> Objection. I'm sorry, I've always wanted to do that. Sparrowson, yes! Oh, our sweet Mamoru. Sparrowson, are you okay? Yep, the doctor said I have an iron stomach. Most of the poison passed straight through me. Speaking of which, I would like to testify on that poisoned chocolate issue. I even got a doctor's note. See? It's too late. The trial's over. You can't be serious, Your Honor. The contents of that note could turn this entire trial on its head. You must allow it. Why are you constantly arguing with me? The job of a public prosecutor was to assist the judge. I told you, Your Honor, my job isn't to get a guilty verdict. It is to ensure that justice is served. I swear you're like the worst prosecutor in all of France. Go ahead, Spedderson. Read the contents of the note for the court to hear. Ahem. This patient, Spedderson, was submitted to Salpetriere. Salpetriere. Right? Salpetriere Hospital where he displayed a variety of symptoms, including profuse sweating, rapid fever, and severe nausea. The patient was diagnosed with poisoning, probably originating from this plant known as aconite, aka monkshood, aka wolfsbane. When we questioned the patient, he admitted to having consumed a discarded chocolate wrapper, potentially carrying the poison. Examining the contents of the patient's stomach confirmed this to be true. As a mental health professional, I believe this patient to be clinically... Uh, oh, well, we can skip that bit. Uh, yada yada yada. Okay, here we go. Signed, Dr. Falrit. Thank you, Sparrowson. I don't think I'll even need to question you. Between your note and the King's testimony, every angle of the chocolate wrapper business has been covered. Awesome. Wait, did you say the King's here? You can get his autograph later. Oh, oh, right. Um, so, what happens now? Do I get cross-examined by the prosecution? To be honest, I see little to cross-examine. Do your damn job. Cross-examine the little annoying liar of a bird. Tear his testimony to shreds. Okay, if it's Wolfsbane, we could say there's a possibility that this wolf was the one who threatened the swan and made her poison them. Maybe. Your Honor, he has a note signed by a medical professional definitively proving that the chocolate wrapper from the crime scene was poisoned. We could nitpick the details, delve into the doctor's credentials, but I fear it would be a waste of the court's time, and nobody wants that. So then what the hell do we do? We do nothing, Your Honor. The poisoned wrapper has introduced an element of doubt into the case. The prosecution must accept that. It's the level... Is the level of doubt reasonable? Is it significant? I think the members of the jury will agree. JJ's evidence is still tenuous. Tenuous. A step above circumstantial. You have proven a link. A not wholly illogical link, but you haven't proven beyond doubt that Major Hal was killed by the chocolate. You're still making far too many assumptions. Where is the empiricism that is required by any good court of law? Where are the witnesses who can back up your claims? brought along a witness. Maybe she can help. Is it the swan? <gasps> oh my god. It totally is this one. Um, hello. Yo. Sparrowson, it's great to see you on your feet, and you've been an enormous asset to this case. But what are you trying to pull off now? Surprise witness. 
surprise witness. Yes, I remember you mentioning that Cocorico liked calling surprise witnesses, so I thought we could beat him at his own game. I brought the flower girl, Mademoiselle Signy, so that she could testify about Prince Juan's character. Oh, you're putting me in a difficult position, Sparrowson. Just moments before you arrived, we, the court, established that Mademoiselle Signy is a possible suspect for this case. W what That can't be right! Sparrowson, it's okay. Monsieur Falcon, I would like to testify. You want to testify? You understand what you are agreeing to? I do. I've accepted my fate. Prosecutor, do you have any objections to me calling upon Mademoiselle Signy as a witness? No, none. Bearing in mind, of course, that you are here to defend Prince Juan, not to convict Mademoiselle Signy. Prosecuting is my job. Of course. Yeah, I have no objections. Proceed, witness. Speak the oath. The oath? Say you swear to speak without hatred, without fear, tell all truth, nothing but the truth, yada yada. Um, I swear, Your Honor, I, I swear to speak without hatred, without fear, to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Good. Great. Please state your name and occupation for the court record. My name is Catherine Marie Signy, and I am a flower seller. Mademoiselle Signy, tell the courtroom of your activities on the morning, the 7th of January. Very well. I saw the king and his entourage enter the Louvre around nine o'clock. I followed, and they came to a stop in the Salle du Tibre. I stepped forward and offered the king chocolate. He refused, but a guard, a big dog by the name of Major Howell, was happy to oblige. The guard died because I personally had previously added poison to the chocolates. No, that can't be right! I used poison derived from monkshood, a notoriously dangerous plant. As a flower seller, it was simple to acquire. Why did you do it, mademoiselle? Why? Monsieur, people have tried to kill the king before, and people will try again. He's a vile man who has no respect or love for the people who suffer under him. I did it to better the French people. I don't believe that at all. Falcon, say something. Mademoiselle, are you being coerced? Are you being threatened? Please speak freely. No, monsieur, I'm confessing of my own volition. It is my guilt, and no one else's. Oh, ooh, interesting. Well, defense, looks like you wormed a confession out of this murderous pute. Suppose that gets you your client, Prince Juan, completely off the hook. Lucky you. Shall we wrap this court session up? Uh. <sighs> but I have this. Um, no, not done. No, not yet. I have further questions for the witness, Your Honor. Further questions? To what end? You already proved your client's innocence. I wish to uncover the truth. You aren't here to uncover the truth. You're here to defend Prince Juan. You did that job with a disgusting level of diligence. Nonetheless, I believe the Mademoiselle has omitted something of huge importance, and I wish to question her further. Something of huge importance. I won't allow it. Fine. Can I at least show something to the witness? You and the prosecutor are a right pair of moralizing blowhards, aren't you? You're doing my head in. Fine. If it's gonna shut you up, I'll let you show one magical mystery item to the witness. Can't imagine you'll have anything up your sleeve to change the flow of this trial, though. Mr. Falcon, please save it. I have nothing more to say. The pen, right? That's like the only thing that we haven't talked about. Magical mystery item. Does this ring any bells, mademoiselle? Fuck! Oh, it should have been the rose. No, this doesn't mean anything to me, I'm afraid. Useless. I knew there was nothing up your sleeve. You lost favor with the jury. Fuck. No! What? No! I know I must have something. Ma'am, was I take a look at this? Maybe the card? Because we know that she went to him? Does this ring any bells, mademoiselle? 
What? You were there! No, this doesn't mean anything to me. What? No! She went to visit them. She went to visit them, at least in, at least in our clients, in Reynard's, like, metaphor. She came to them and said that somebody was threatening her family, and so she needed to kill the king. I guess the rose, that's the only other thing I can think of. Does this ring any bells, mademoiselle? Fuck. I'm losing him. Fuck. And now if you're overstepping your bounds as a defense attorney, Falcon. You've clearly proven your client is innocent by tracking down a real murderer, so your job is done. But your honor. I'm afraid the judge is in the right here, JJ. It's obvious you want to exonerate this mademoiselle, and that's admirable. It's also obvious you don't have the evidence to support your claims right here and now. Let it go. The mademoiselle can defend herself in her own trial. We're in agreement. Prosecutor, we're ready to wrap this up. We are. I have no further questions for the defense or for Mademoiselle Signy. Then now I'm gonna converse with the jury, decide Prince Juan's verdict. Although, I suspect it's not gonna take too long. Don't worry, Mademoiselle. We'll get you out of this. Won't we, Falcon? Sparrison, you're clearly a caring individual, but this outcome is for the best. Was this for the best my parents i knew it i knew it i knew it no i think no matter what you give to her she claims that it's not that she doesn't know because she wants to be there to keep her family safe my parents are safe and that's all i wanted your parents but what about you well that deliberation was straightforward we find the defendant prince juan carido to be cleared of all charges we therefore find the defendant not guilty Oh, it's not an exciting not guilty at all. Your Honor, what's going to happen to me? You? Well, you haven't been formally tried yet. Fortunately for you, we have a free trial slot this afternoon, so we should be able to determine your guilt by nightfall. You may even see the blade of the guillotine by tomorrow. How lucky. I see. You look scared, mademoiselle. Don't fret. They shop in the guillotine blades. The guillotine. The guillotine blades regularly. Nobody here likes gallows humor? Ah, whatever. Court's adjourned. I think this is goodbye. Thank you, Mr. Falcon. Mr. Sparrowson. You did your best. It can't end like this. This... This isn't how I wanted things to go, Senor Falcon. No, me neither. We mustn't blame ourselves. You made an admirable effort to save everyone. What good is effort if these are the results I produce? Tell me, Senor Falcon, do you know why I hired you as my defense lawyer? No. I hired you because I thought you were a lawyer with a philosophy, an ideal, and I stand by that. You are a man with a strong ideal. It's just unrefined, like an unpolished gemstone. I'm sure that given enough time, your ideal will become refined and you will live, you will come to live up to your reputable family name. <laughs> The family name is reputable? I didn't know that. He's not talking about... Oh, never mind. In any case, here's your payment. I don't deserve this. Keep it. I dragged you into this. It's only fair that I compensate you for your time. I think this is the last you will see of Prince Juan. Feel free to come by r and Associates if you need help in the future, Senor Falcon. Impressive, JJ. You actually managed to successfully defend your client. Severin... Are you going to be in charge of prosecuting Mademoiselle Signy? Probably. Why? Do you think you can get her a reduced sentence? For attempting to murder the king? I empathize with the Mademoiselle, JJ, but I'm not a miracle worker. No lawyer can save the flower girl now. What about us? We're lawyers. I'm going to get a drink. Yeah, me too. He ate a poisoned wrapper for us. Aww.